Hey everybody, it's your boy, Team Monster, Freedom to See. So I'm gonna get straight into it. So today, basically, I'm here to talk about why I think that most of us are insane and why I think that I was insane and why I think that you're insane. Now, before you judge me, Einstein, he had a definition for insanity. And his definition was doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. You know, Einstein was a genius, he had an IQ about 150 plus, and if he had a definition, I would love to believe that I'm entitled to my definition also. And my definition is living day by day, month after month, year after year, without any goals, without any plans, without any purpose, and expecting to be successful or having a successful result. And you would absolutely have to be insane to think you can do it any other way. Now, in my opinion and opinion of many others, setting goals, having a plan is actually the most substantial, most significant thing that anybody should do, that you should do when it comes to basically achieving anything that you want in this life. You see, I believe that you were designed for greatness. I believe that we are cre created for success. I can promise you, I can sit here and tell you that God didn't create us to be failures. Failure is not an innate ability. He wasn't born with failure. When a baby is born, the doctor doesn't say, congratulations, you have a brand new baby. Unfortunately, we have to diagnose him with failure. See, failure is just simply a testimony of our growth. It should be our story, one that we should tell once we get to our destination. And the problem with that is we live in such a negative and pessimistic world from the time we were born, we are conditioned to fail. A world where we've heard, no, we can't do it our whole entire lives. A world where on average, humans, we have 50,000 thoughts every single day and 70% of that is actually negative. A world where people make life decisions based off of one negative thing when they know there's a million positive. And in such a negative and pessimistic world, you have to understand that it can be really problematic if you don't have detailed goals or a detailed plans. The good news is having a goal set and making a plan is not some convoluted science project. It is simply having a detailed roadmap that can take you from point A to point Z. You gotta ask yourself this question. When a captain sails the Atlantic Ocean, before that ship leaves the pier, he knows where he's going. He knows what time he's going to get there. He knows the speed he has to use, the course he has to take, the points he has to hit. And 99.9% .9 of the time, he will arrive at his destination. And he would absolutely be insane to think otherwise. Bin Laden was killed May 2011 in Pakistan by special forces. And I'm pretty sure if you ask special forces, how did you kill Bin Laden? I'm pretty sure they're not going to say... Well, you know, we was just taking a stroll in Pakistan and we just happened to see Bin Laden running across the street into a house and we fall and we killed him. No, it takes months and months of planning. You see, the reality is we've been planning our whole lives, but we didn't spend time planning where it matters most. And that's ourselves. But what's really crazy, what's really insane is that most of us, we're trying to get to a destination without any direction. We're trying to reach goals that we don't have. And more importantly, trying to hit targets that we can't even see. You see, we would spend months planning the perfect wedding. Making sure the food is right, making sure the wine's great, making sure the, the music's good to go, the butterflies and the fairies and the magical glitter stuff. But once we tie that knot, we wouldn't spend one day planning the marriage. We would spend hours and days looking for the perfect job. We're stressed out. Oh, I need this job. I got to pay my bills. I got to pay my mortgage. But when we get the job, we're more competent at looking at the time to figure out what time is it to go home than actually being productive at the job. What's the definition of insanity? You see, I actually believe that there's two types of people in this world who doesn't have goals at all. And that's dead people and homeless people. Dead people for obvious reasons, because they died, they kicked the bucket, they can't set any goals. And I believe that most people who died, they died with their song still playing at them. They, they, uh, they died with, you know, they, they got buried with all their, their goals, hopes, and dreams. And then homeless people, because I believe that most of them 
they threw in the towel. They called it quits. They let their circumstances and their environment become their reality. And now they're just wandering aimlessly. And if you don't have any direction, there's always going to be confusion. Now, on the flip side of that, I think most of us have goals. And it's what I like to call borrowed goals. And you have borrowed goals, especially if you have a job. Now, having goals is, is like having a routine. And if you have a job, here's your routine. You wake up in the morning at a certain time, you wash your face, you eat breakfast at a certain time, you leave the house at a certain time to get to work for a certain time. When you get on that work, you have a certain task that you have to do in order to get the job done. And you do this day after day after day. Now, like I said before, these are not your goals. This is borrowed goals. And as the saying goes, if you don't have your own goals, if you don't have your own dreams, somebody else will pay you in exchange for your time, use you as leverage to complete their goals and build their dreams. Now, I'm not saying having a job is a bad thing. What I am saying, however, is if you are going to work today because that's what you did yesterday, there's no personal growth because it's not your goals. You're two days older and you're not one step closer to a goal that you never had. And a lot of people might disagree with me. They might say, well, I don't have the time. You know, I'm not motivated or my plate is always full. Well, ask me, answer me this. If our plate is always full, then why are we not eating? You see, my new philosophy is for every action is a reaction. And I believe that this world that we live in it is a home buffet of choices. All you can have choices. And it is definitively your choice to what you put on your plate. Whether you want to put a pizza on your plate or an apple on your plate. Whether you want to put the couch on your plate or the gym on your plate. Whether you want to put the watching TV all day on your plate or you want to put reading a book to better yourself on a plate. The choice is yours. And for every action, there's a reaction. So if you don't put anything that's pr productive or conducive to making yourself better on your plate, your choices will become the catalyst of your own failure. Then most people will say, hey, well, I don't have the time. And this is what I can tell you. It's not that you don't have the time. You just lack direction. You see, direction is what creates time. And I promise you, if you were to plan, if you were to have a detailed roadmap, you can have an extra four hours a day if you planned it right with time. And then last but not least, my favorite, I'm not motivated. I don't feel like doing it. But this is what I can tell you. If you're not motivated now, don't wait for the motivation to come because it's never going to come. You see, most of us, we're waiting until Donald Trump gets in the White House. We're waiting until uh, the summer is over. We're waiting until the winter comes. We're waiting until the kids get out of school. We're waiting until we have enough money. We're always going to be waiting. You see, the time is now. And newsflash for you. Motivation does not come before action. Action comes first. Then the motivation follows after. And once you have the motivation, you get the energy. Once you have the energy, you have that drive. And that is how you start. You have to act before the motivation. So don't wait. It's never going to be perfect. You have to literally do the action to get the motivation. So don't tell me you don't have the time. Don't tell me you're not motivated. Don't tell me your plate is too full. Or don't tell me you're tired. All you got to say is that you're just uninspired. Because the reality is, if you really want it, you're going to find a way. And if you don't, we're always going to find an excuse. And remember, for every action is a reaction. So if you don't do nothing, it's like the law of gravity. You really can't expect nothing. But my job here today is primarily is to tell you that it's already in you. That greatness. Don't wish for, you know, don't wish that you had somebody else's strength. It's already there. Don't wish that you had that money. It's already there. You just have to dig deep within yourself. Come up with a plan. Identify the people who are going to help you in your way, way there. Identify the obstacles. Put a timestamp on it. And do the action, the motivation comes, the motivation drives energy, and now that you have direction, you have time. You were engineered for greatness. You were designed for success. You already have greatness in you. You have what it takes. And with no plan, 
there's always going to be confusion. So I got some homework for you. The next time you're in the mirror, I want you to take off all your clothes. Take a deep look at yourself, mentally and physically. And if you see a problem, if you can see it, mentally or physically, there's only one thing to do. Have a goal, have a plan, fix your problem. It's your boy, Team Monster. I'm out. Love y'all. See y'all on the beaches. Peace.